Hey, what's up, crypto tubers? It's me, remember me? Jimmy J, Cryptographic. I know it's been a long time in between videos. Uh, I've enjoyed chatting to a few of you in the Discord server. Those of you who haven't joined, check the link down below. Come and join the chat room. Um, we've got a nice little community starting to grow in there, just a place for people to hang out. And uh, the plan is that eventually it's going to be a place where, you know, no matter the time zone, no matter what time you log in there, there'll be someone logged on who can help you with your questions or just chat and just, you know, discuss choices, trading choices, that kind of thing. Um, but look, guys, um, those of you who have been chatting to me in the Discord will know and on the Facebook group will know that I've had a bit of family stuff going on over the past few days, so I haven't posted a video for a few days, but... Um, I wanted to post a video in response to a lot of the uh, the comments that I've been getting and uh, just the feedback I've been getting from some of the subscribers that um, some of my stuff is a little bit too, I, I use a little bit too much jargon or sort of tech speak or complicated, um, you know, sort of uh, uh, slang industry slang that some people who are, who are new to the crypto arena might not yet fully understand or know about or some people who are new to trading might yet, might not yet fully understand. So uh, the plan of this video is to basically go through some of the most common um, jargon terms that you're going to hear in, in the crypt, not only in the crypto space but just in the general trading space um, to have a look at them and also to maybe analyze a little bit um, how applicable a lot of these different uh, methods and uh, indicators are when we're trading crypto, when we're looking at, at, at crypto graphs. So, um, crypto graphs, crypto graphic, that's the man, Jimmy J. Um, so, look, we'll come over here, start recording the screen here. So, look, the first thing, guys, that I want to talk to you about is of course candles so if we come over to trading view over here it's having a look at the Bitcoin versus dollar uh, and zoom in a little bit so when you hear people talking about candles they are talking about these candle shaped objects here so you'll see that each uh, each object each green or red object has a sort of a, a main body uh, and then a kind of a wick on either end. So hence the term candles. That's why we refer to them as candles. Um, so when you look at these, these, uh, these objects, these candles, they tell you a few different pieces of information. So um, if we're to just say, for example, look at where's one that's got a nice wick on the top and the bottom let's look at this little guy down here this little green guy down here it's this little one so if I just come away from from him for a sec we'll just notice that on the on, on this candle there are four points to to take heed of there's the top of the wick up here and then if I come away for him for a second again and then there's the top of the main body then there's the bottom of the main body and then there's the bottom of, of the bottom wick here, yeah? So basically what this represents, um, if, the, if the candle is green, it means that in that time period that we have selected, so right here we've got 30 minutes selected as our time period. So it means that within that 30 minute period, at the opening of the 30 minute period, the price was at the bottom of the body here, and at the close of the 30 minute period, it was at the top of the body here. Now the wicks on the top and bottom, they simply indicate the highest that the price got within that period and the lowest that the price got within that period. So if you see a green candle overall, it means that within that 30 minute time period, the price moved up. So it started on this, at the bottom of the main body here and moved up to the top of the main body here. And in between, it went up to the top of this week and the bottom of this week um, here. So obviously with a red candle, 
it started at the top of the main body and then ended at that 30 minute period at the bottom of the main body here. So um, those are what people mean when they refer to the candles. I'm sure you've all seen them before and wondered how to decipher them. Some of you, some of the, some of you will already know. Uh, for those that already know, just bear with me. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is volume. Volume is a very important um, indicator. It's a, it's a very important thing to look at when trading. So on most graphs that you log into, even even on Bit T-Rex, um, if you look down the bottom here, they will generally show you uh, an idea of the volume that happened in that time period. So if we look, for example, over here at uh, this, these green candles in here, we started to jump in this first little area here in these first four or five candles. And uh, let me get a line here. These first four or five candles here, we started to jump. And we can see down the bottom here, this, this green bar coming up to here uh, represents the volume of buying that happened in that period. So that's the volume of buying that supported this jump in price here, yeah? And so following this little, this little green candle, uh, we see that there is a few red candles here. So they obviously signify selling off and there was a little bit of a dip in the price, followed by this big green candle down here, and consequently, this big jump in the price from here to here, right? So these candles down the, not candles, but bars that you see down the bottom, this bar graph that you see down the bottom, is, is signifying the amount of buying and selling. Obviously, if it's a green bar, there's a lot of buying going on, and it will usually correspond to a jump in the price, uh, whereas a, a red bar or group of red bars like we see here will usually correspond to a dip in the price. Yeah, so another way to look at volume and a, a, another area that volume uh, links in on is if we go over to BitTrex here. And yes, it is BitTrex. This time I'm gonna put the T-Rex in the top left corner of the video just to prove to you all that it is in fact bit T-Rex. But if we have a look at Neo, y'all know I love Neo. And we click over here in bit T-Rex on the order book. This is another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, so the order book here, make sure you always select 100% or, or generally all is what I go for. And what this is gonna show you is a, a general picture, a sort of visualization of the volume that lies in, in the buy orders and the volume that lies over here in the sell orders, right? So if we were to talk about buy walls or sell walls, you can see here how we've got this steep wall that's forming over here on the red side on the on the sell volume, yeah, in the in the sell book. So this wall here, this is what we would refer to as a buy wall. So what that means is that at this particular price, uh, which is around 0 0.008, oh, that seems to be shifting around a little bit. There we go, 0 0.0086 or so, um, that there is a, a lot of accumulation of sell orders. A lot of people are at that point and they have orders to sell at that point. So if you're looking to invest in NEO uh, around about this price here, and you can see that you've got these walls coming up, you've got a lot of volume coming up, these three different, these big walls here, you don't really wanna be buying here because as soon as you get to these walls and all this volume starts to sell off, it can then push the price back down, back below where you bought in, and it's generally gonna push it um, you know, negative to these sell walls. Um, con conversely, you can also have buy walls, which, I mean, we can look at this little wall here. It's not exactly a buy wall. Wouldn't exactly be considered a buy wall, but the same thing could happen if you had a big wall that went from here and, and came down. A big wall like this would also be considered a buy wall, yeah? 
So um, buy and sell walls are simply a big accumulation in the order book. So if we go down to the order book here, look at this, it's at uh, what is it? 0 0.008, so we go to point Going up to about 0 0.008, there we go, we see it, 0 0.0081, and look at that. We have 1,831 NEO waiting to be sold. Yeah, 14.8 Bitcoin worth, right? So we look at that, and that is this big wall that we're seeing here. So if you were coming in on this side and thinking of investing in NEO, and you saw this big 14.8 Bitcoin wall in front of you, you might reconsider, you might want to re-examine your position and maybe wait for the the volume to clear up a bit and wait for some of this this wall to be uh, eaten away and chewed into a little bit before you make your entry point <coughs> into the uh, into the into the trade. There we go. Down here is actually a, a bigger one, six thousand four hundred neo right at 0 0.008 so that's the wall that i was looking for um obviously with it jumping around it was a bit hard to put on too but these are why we've got we've got multiple walls up here um and so these are acting right now as a bit of a deterrent for neo to be able to um shoot up and 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 climb upwards from the from the spot that it's currently in yeah it's we would we would say that it's going to meet some resistance when it hits those buy walls, yeah. So, um, let's just remove these other two lines from before. So, the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is support lines and resistance lines or levels, right? So, if if I'm talking about a support line, generally I mean it's going to be somewhere where as the the stock or the coin is is climbing up uh it's it's come down and then it's met support so if i just was to put a line from here to here so you would see across this line that as bitcoin has risen above this point it's then come back down and it's hit this line here right at about four thousand almost almost on 4000 exactly and it's bounced back up off this line yeah so what you're going to what what that means is that there's there is some support at this level so if if you ever see me looking at a graph and i say we've got some strong support here at uh, 4200 or we've got some strong support here at uh, 4100 or or whatever you can you can see it's when the price has gone up and then come back down even like just on a smaller scale, just here, the price has gone up and then come back down and then bounced off this this line here. That's called a support. Now, if if we were to if we were to reverse this terminology and do it on the way up, if I was to put a line along here, we would see that the price was climbing up and then it hit this line and it came back down. So it then it's met res that's what then went what we would call resistance so as the price has climbed up it's hit this point and then it's it's we would say it's met resistance at this point um, so it's found difficulty to cross this point and that often could be as a result of of what we looked at before some kind of buy wall that could be up um, there could be a lot of people selling at that particular price point which is making it difficult for the stock or the coin to um, to climb above that price point. Okay, so um, exactly the same principle as our, our support lines down here, except that it's reversed and on the way up, and then it becomes a resistance line. Okay. Okay, so a couple of other terms that you're going to hear. Um, Either when talking about trading or talking about either either when talking about trading coins or trading stocks is to be long or short on something. Okay. So you'll often hear people saying, I'm long on Neo, such as me, I'm long on Neo. And then at other times people will will, will be saying that they are shorting 
a certain stock or they're shorting a certain coin. So, um, what does shorting, what does long and short mean? So basically, uh, in simplest terms, if you were long on something, it means that you're heavily invested in it. You have faith that it's on an upward trend, that it's, um, you know, bullish. Actually, that's probably what I should have mentioned first. You know, when something's bullish, it's on an upward trend. It's looking good. It's looking like it's going to climb up. And when it's bearish, conversely, it's looking like it's it's gonna it's gonna go downward. It's looking like it's it's about to crash, right? Um, so it's not a good outlook. Uh, so bullish is a good, strong upward trend line, upward outlook, and bearish uh, is then a downward outlook, and and it and it's. It, with we as we uh we expect that the stock or the coin is gonna go downwards, right? So if we were to take a snapshot, say of just this area here, and we were to put a trend line in, just going across here, we'd say, oh, that's a bit bearish, right? That's a bearish trend line. Uh, put one on the bottom as well. The bottom matches up with it. We just that on that short snapshot, we'd say, Oh, that's very, very bearish. But this is what you're about to realize and about to see is that often these things mean nothing at all because we've broken out of that now uh, and we're on the way up. And, and I strongly believe that over the next couple of weeks, you're going to see Bitcoin shoot up to new highs. But um, yeah, all of these, all of basically all of these um, indicators. And, and terms and, and, and various um, techniques that we're going to use for, for analyzing graphs, all of these should be taken with a grain of salt. And, and probably one of the most important things that I should have meant that mentioned at the start of the video is that in crypto, all of this technical analysis can just go out the window just like that. I mean, we are in a market that is so speculative uh, and so often, unfortunately, just driven on hype and rumors that all of this TA, TA meaning technical analysis, there's another set of jargon for you to write down TA. If you see TA written anywhere, it means technical analysis. All of this TA can just go shooting out the window at any given point just based on a tweet from someone who might have run into the developer of whatever coin or, or whatever and heard some rumor. Um... So, yeah, look, I mean, um, take it with a grain of salt. It's good to know these things. It's good to research these things and uh, understand the terms uh, so you know what they mean when they're mentioned and you, and you can then use them to, to supplement uh, what you know about a certain coin, about the underlying tech and the team. Um, but these should never be your only means of detecting whether or not you think a coin is gonna is gonna head upwards, right? Um, yeah. So I mean, look. Take each of these indicators with a grain of salt, as I mentioned. Yeah. So shorting, on the other on the other hand, uh, I mentioned if you're long on something, it means that you've heavily invested in it. You're expecting it to go up. Shorting is a practice that's been around for quite a while. If we just bring up um, uh, shorting a stock or something. Basically, what it is is that you have a broker in the in the middle. There we go uh, for dummies or whatever. You have a broker in the middle, and you borrow some of the said stock off the broker, uh, and you then sell it straight away. So you don't own the stock to begin with. Um, you sell it straight away and you, you're expecting it to go down and then subsequently when the stock goes down, you then buy up more of it uh, and then you pay back your loan to the broker and you then get to keep the difference. You've gained, uh, you've gained an amount of that stock without having ever owned any to begin with. So shorting, mm, there's a degree of, uh, there's a bit of a clash in the crypto markets as to whether or not we should be shorting stocks just because it's a uh, a technique that's often used by the centralized stock market and Wall Street and that kind of thing. And I mean, 
um, you could argue that if you're uh, investing or, or betting with money that you didn't own in the first place, then that's part of what has led to a lot of the um, instability of our current economy. Um, but you know that's for you to work out yourself. I'm just explaining what the terms mean. So here we go. Here's, here's an explanation. Borrow the stock you want to bet against. Contact your broker to find shares of the stock that you think will go down and request to borrow the, sh borrow the shares. Uh, the broker then locates another investigator, uh, investor who owns the shares and borrows them with a promise to return the shares at a prearranged later date. You get the shares. Don't think you're going to borrow the shares for nothing though. You'll have to pay fees and interest to the broker for the privilege. Okay, so immediately after getting these shares you've borrowed, you sell them, okay? You've got the cash from selling the shares. You wait for it to fall. You've predicted that it's going to fall. And then you buy back at the new lower price, uh, therefore gaining more of the original shares that you borrowed. So you return the shares to your brokerage um, that you borrowed from them and, and you pay them the fees that were mentioned in the in step one. Uh, and then you're left, you pocket the difference. Yeah, so uh, as you've, you've borrowed up, so you've, let's go back to the graph here. So let's just say you shorted Bitcoin up here. So you borrowed some Bitcoin, you sold it straight away. Bitcoin plummeted down to here. And then this is when you bought up some more Bitcoin, um, paid back your original amount that you borrowed up here, and then you were left with all of the extra Bitcoin that you gained from selling up the top and then buying back at the bottom of, of this dip. Yeah. So um, shorting is not something that I do personally. Um, I have done it with penny stocks back when I was learning and, and following Timothy Sykes and learning a bit of that stuff but personally I don't um, I don't see it as a, a process of a, of a healthy market um, I think that uh, part of what Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies were made to do is uh, to stop uh, processes like that this doesn't mean that I think that people who short are, are bad or wrong or I dislike them in any way that's just the personal opinion of my own um, I think it's a bit dangerous especially for people who are new to crypto uh, new to trading uh, it can it can turn out much more of a dangerous position than just sort of investing your own money because you're actually borrowing um, something that you didn't own originally so uh, at the end of the day you you end up in for something that you may not have even had to begin with so it can be more dangerous as well. Um, yada, 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 that's just my point of view. All right, so if we talk about consolidation, if we talk about a period of consolidation, just trying to go back and have a look at Bitcoin to find a period of consolidation to a degree. Kind of to a degree, you could call that con consolidation. To a degree. Basically, so what consolidation is, is when a the price of a, a, a coin or a share is kind of coming from sort of wildly fluctuating to it's, it's kind of the fluctuations are becoming smaller and smaller and it's leading into uh, a single point and the price seems to be uh, gathering at a certain level. So it's kind of consolidating, it's finding its kind of healthy level where it wants to sit at. Uh, so when you, when, when you see or hear someone say that uh, a coin is in a period of consolidation, this means that um, it's, the, the fluctuations are growing smaller and it's starting to level out and find a healthy level uh, that it then is comfortable at, right? So you could call this, as I said, it's a very short period to call it, but you could call this consolidation. Um, generally, in a consolidation period, it'd be a bit flatter, flatter than this. You'd probably be more inclined to call this a triangle. Um, but that's the kind of thing you're looking at in a period of consolidation. I mean, let's just get rid of them. If 
we scroll along here, we should be able to find a sort of a, a better, better example of that for you. Let's just zoom in on this. This is probably more what I would call a period of consolidation here. So not as wild fluctuations. It's kind of just continuing on within a similar range. Maybe getting a little bit smaller, but kind of just sitting between a certain range. And you could almost draw a straight line along the middle of it. So if we took another line here, we could almost draw a straight line along the middle and uh, we would see a sort of an even amount of um, crossing over and under this line that we had then drawn in the middle, yeah? So that's consolidation. Next I had in the list was EMA. So you guys know that I love um, the EMAs, the golden cross method. Um, so the exponential moving average, so EMA, so in my first video, um, where I mentioned the golden cross method, which is a method that I use to day trade and just do a few small trades every day, um, and thereby making, you know, 30 to 50 to $60 a trade and in a day making, you know, one to $200 and just enough to pay my bills. So that was the golden cross method that I talked about. So if we're here in tradingview.com, uh, we want to go to indicators. EMA, EMA, we'll add two of them. And there are many, many different frequencies that you can do for these. One of the most popular and most common would be 12 and 24. And as mentioned in my first video, we're watching for the shorter moving average. So the, so all that the, the moving average is, is it's taking whatever the frequency is that you've stipulated here, so 12 and 24. So the green line, which is the 12 line, it's taking, it's taking these, these candles in groups of 12 and it's drawing a smooth line, just averaging out the traveling of the, the level that the price is traveling every 12 candles, right? Then for the 24, it's doing the same thing with the yellow line. It's a bit, the colors are a bit similar there. It's doing the same thing with the red line, but every 24 candles, right? Now the method and the frequency that I personally like to use. I saw it on, I saw Trevon James use it. And ever since then, it has been, it has proven itself to be perfect for just the amount of time that I like to put between my trades. The amount of time I like to just walk away from the computer and forget about it is the 1334. Um, but I mean, these things, you can, you can stretch these moving averages out, this golden cross, cross method, you can stretch this out, you know, all the way up to, to whatever you want. It goes, you know, up to even, we could do 50, where are we? 50 and 200. And look at that. So the more you stretch that number out, the more dramatic it is 
and the bigger of an indicator it is. So if you were a, a longer term trader, you might want to stretch this right out and even change your your candles to one day. And look at that. That's I mean that shows us right there just the bullish trend that Bitcoin has been in. Just because our 50 line is just it hasn't even crossed under the 200 line in all that time. It's just been a completely bullish trend. But if we go back, let's say even one hour. And then you're going to start to see these crossover points. Yeah, so those the golden cross, meaning we're using these crossover points as our signals to start buying. So we've been selling all the way up here. Um, as it crossed back over, we've, we should have bought under here and we're selling all the way up here. And then when it crosses back under, we're gonna buy it up again, buy it up again, and then start selling as it crosses back over. Then we're buying down here, it's still under, so we're buying, buying, you could buy all the way down here. And then you might sell up there, but you might choose to wait because it's not crossing over in such a dramatic fashion. So you might choose to just wait a bit here just hold on to it over here. You should have already bought a lot down here. So you'd be holding on to it and then wait for it to cross above here and then be selling it all the way up over here. So the bigger the stretch between these numbers, the more dramatic it's gonna be, the more of a of a, of a, of a, uh, a dramatic signal, the more of a clear signal it's gonna give you. But the thing about this that you've gotta remember is that the larger that you make these numbers, the longer that you're gonna be waiting between trades. So a lot of people, myself included, if you're talking about day trading, I want it to be day trading. I wanna be able to make the trade in a day. You know, the rest of my portfolio, I'm just buying and holding. I don't want to be buying Bitcoin and then holding onto it and watching it over a, you know, this is, we're talking about, this is a whole month right here. And, we're, and we've got what? from September, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six crosses in that whole month. So six buying signals across the month. That That's not for me, that's not how I trade. Um, so that's personally why I love that frequency, the 1334. On the 30 minute candles and that has worked perfectly for just being able to set the trades walk away from them for, for six to eight hours and come back and have a look how they're going um, and a lot of the time they've sold sometimes they won't have but i've found a lot of success with this method on the 30 minute candles bugger boom okay so the next thing we're going to talk about is the macd so you will hear the MACD talked about a lot. And if we type in the MACD. So what MACD stands for is the moving average convergence and divergence. So to be honest guys, more or less, if we'll change this, change the settings to 13, 34, the same as what we've got up here. This is more or less another way to decipher uh, the moving averages um, and just basically a different way of, of looking at it, uh, a different indicator. You've got a center line here to base your trades off as well. So it kind of adds an extra degree of, um, if you wanted to, to set yourself an extra degree of parameters, uh, you could be only acting via this center line, which would which would be considered zero, um, and only acting only buying when it crosses below that center line. So, uh, for example, uh, if we go back here, for example, over here we see that um, we get a we get a cross under here, but as it doesn't cross over this center line of zero. We, we don't consider this enough of a, of a buy signal. So we then would be waiting until this point here. And then once it crosses under here, we'd be buying. 
um, and then once it crosses back over, we would we would consider the cell signal here. So you can choose to use that um, for an added degree of uh, of of an indicator uh, to to make it a bit easier to to call your entry and exit points when you're doing the golden cross method. Um, but basically, still using the same principles as your exponential moving average, um, or even simple moving average, uh, and just a a different way to to look at it and to time it giving yourself a center line which can make things a lot clearer for some people um, and easier for some people to to choose their entry and exit points um, what did I have less next was the RSI you will have heard this one a lot this is a this is a great one relative strength in index often often called more indicators per chart. Oh, because I'm on the free. All right. So we'll take a couple of these off. Take this off. Because I'm on the free version. Relative strength index, otherwise known as the relative strength indicator, wrongly called the relative strength indicator. So this can be a good signal. Um, basically, more or less what this is telling us is when a coin or stock is overbought or undersold. So again, with this, you, you, you would set your parameters and then you see these, these, this top and bottom, the range that we have within here. So whenever our line crosses outside the range here, so it crosses above the range here, we know that the coin is overbought and we can expect a downturn we can expect there to be a bit of a sell-off of that coin and it to then come down from that point uh, similarly when it crosses under the line like here we know that the coin is oversold uh, and we can then expect um, an upturn in the coin and we can expect some some people to start buying more of that coin and it for for it to go on an upturn from that point um, so that's what the RSI means personally. If you use the moving averages with the RSI, it's a great indicator, great way to do your do your charts. Um, let's get rid of volume so we can fit some more in here. We'll go um, in a, put two of them in there. And we'll go again, 13. There we go. So when you used in conjunction, we want to change this range to thirteen. When you used in conjunction with the 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 golden cross method, the EMA, we can we can start to get a much clearer indicator of when to sell. Like for example, here, um, we cross over uh, and come up here. I mean, uh, this would be an obvious place to sell into, to sell into the strength coming up here. Um, but again, we just have that extra confirmation when we look down here that it's crossed over, it's, it's, uh, it's an overbought position and it's gonna start to uh, rebound and and come downwards again soon as we see further in the charts here similarly when it dips when it dips down uh, even though we can pretty easily get the information out of our our moving averages there it's just a bit of extra confirmation down here down here that it crosses under um, our range and is then a good time to buy into it but then look you know i mean Again, this is not a concrete method. I mean, you would you could have bought down here and then just as it crosses over here, you're still hopefully within your range. So you say, okay, I'm gonna hold on to it. And then you don't sell off here. And then look, a dip can happen. Anything can happen, news can come in. Um, so all of this stuff, again, I will repeat, should be taken with a grain of salt. And all of this technical analysis stuff really, um, oftentimes can end up meaning nothing 
uh, when some, some unexpected news or an unexpected tweet or something hits the marketplace and just uh, throws everything that you were previously planning to hell, right? Okay, so we'll talk about a couple of shapes in the graph. <coughs> so the first one I want to talk about was a head and shoulders. <coughs> and let me just say straight off the bat, guys, this is the kind of um, this is the kind of shape that really I would I would recommend that you just ignore. Excuse me, I need a drink of water. Really, I would recommend you just ignore. Uh, but it it's it's uh, you know it's a commonly referred to um, pattern, and it's also pretty much a pattern that if you look hard enough you can find anywhere so it can end up confusing more than um, more than helping and I probably would recommend you just leave it alone but a head and shoulders is basically uh, uh, where are we X, no, I just want to, here we go, head and shoulders. So, we could go left shoulder here. The head comes up to here. And comes down to here. And the right shoulder comes down to here. So you see this head and shoulders shape here, yeah? Which is quite obvious is supposed to be the head in the middle, the left shoulder and the right shoulder. So what this is supposed to signify is a turnaround in the trend up until that point. So um, we could say that it's been an uptrend up until, up until this point. Yeah, we can see quite clearly that the price of Bitcoin was moving in this upward channel up until this point. So we then hit this head and shoulders pattern and this what this is supposed to signify is a reversal of the trend up until that point. So um, Again, this is something that you see on Twitter all the time where people go possible head and shoulders and not even understanding what it's meant to mean. And some you, you will often see tweets with head and shoulders forming, we're going to the moon and stuff like that. And it's like, man, you, look, just this stuff is so often misused in the crypto market. And, and even as I said, with the added degree of hype and specul speculative, um, the speculative element that we have in the crypto market, these kind of patterns are more often than not good for nothing. And I would I would highly recommend that you leave it out of it. Okay, so I mean, we can have a look here. It's at the point I'm at now. It's the fifth of October. We've just seen this head and shoulders pattern here. So this is supposed to signify a downward trend. Um, you know, you could, you could say that's a downward trend there, but, it, you know, there have been bigger downward trends in this, in this up channel that we're looking at here. So, I mean, when this video comes out, look at it in a couple of days. If you're watching this after, um, you know, October 7th, 8th, tell me if, if Bitcoin is above 4,300, uh, to, about 4200 yeah if bitcoin's above that then that's this is a a, a misleading uh appearance of head of a head and shoulders shape in the graph and look in my experience sometimes it might be right but more often than not this is the kind of thing that you just want to leave out and uh not worry about because it can it, more often than not it's just going to mean nothing in the crypto market uh, and you're probably just going to want to forget about it. Okay. Um, 
So next we want to talk about, all right, double top or a double bottom. These actually, this is a pattern that often can, often can be quite promising, but again, often just doesn't event, doesn't turn out like you want it to. So for example, here, let's just zoom in on this section here. So a double top meaning Well, to be fair, it's already been above this, so we'll go here. We'll go up the top here. Here we go. So a double top meaning the coin is climbing up and reaches this top position and then bounces back down and comes back and, and touches that top position again. And that is meant to signify that it will come up a third time and then bust upwards out of that and bust through that resistance. Like we said before, That's this is an obvious resistance point that we're seeing here, yeah? So this is meant to signify that it will bust upwards out of that resistance this time. It hasn't signified that. Um, and but oftentimes I've I've noticed that it, it, it actually can that it is on the third or sometimes even fourth time that a coin if it keeps tapping that resistance line it will eventually bust through. Um, so definitely something to watch for if a coin is repeatedly touching on a resistance level, um, or even conversely on its way down if it's repeatedly touching on a a support level, it it might mean that it's about to bust through and break downwards through that support level. Yeah. Um, so, just trying to find another instance where it's on, on the same, to a degree, I guess. Here, you could, you could, you could say that it was double bottoming here, even triple bottoming with this third. So we've got one, two, and then triple bottoming um, with this third touch here on this support line, and then breaking through down here. Yeah. After one, two, three touches, we then have a break through the support line, which is which is here, um, and and it then breaks down. So this this is something that I would personally be keeping my eyes out for is a double top or a double bottom. It can be a good indicator of where a, where a coin's going to go, um, or if nothing else, at least where a coin's resistance or support levels are lying at. Um, so definitely can be a useful one to look at there. Um, all right. So the last one we had again is another thing that you see all over Twitter. <laughs> um, the cup and handle. So let's see if we can't find a cup and handle. This is another thing where you can sort of like, if you zoom in enough or if you, um, you know, if you look hard enough, you can almost find it anywhere kind of thing. Um, just having a scroll through here. Not seeing too many clear cup and handles in this. I mean, there are sort of where are we? Do they have a cup and handle indicator? No. Anyway, so basically, I'll just do it with these single lines. You'd be sort of coming down here in a rounded position, a rounded kind of shape. So this is not a very good looking cup and handle. And coming up here and then dipping again, 
into what we're now coming into the handle, which will be coming down here. And, and then going back up again. So if you were to be, say, coming in an upward trend um, and you hit this big dip into a cup and handle, um, this is actually supposed to signify a continuation of that trend. So, um, so if 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 you uh, if you were coming upwards into this there, and then you came and started to dip into this cup, uh, and then into your handle, it was it would supposedly signify a continuation of that upward trend. Um, and conversely, if you were on the way down and then you had a, 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 an inverse cup and handle, it would signify that eventually the downward trend was gonna continue as well. Again, guys, this is one of those ones that I would just leave on the side and just forget in the crypto markets. Um, more often than not, it's, it's not gonna do much for you. It's another one that's hugely misused on Twitter um, to falsely kind of add an appearance of, of knowledge and, and technical knowledge. People will put graphs up where they've said, oh, cup and handle forming, moonshot, you know, again. And it's just one of those terms that more often than not hardly tells you much. Uh, and especially in the crypto space, more often than not won't do you much good. So I'd leave that out. Um, on that note, guys, look, this video has gone on for a long time. Um, I hope that... I hope that um, that this is this has helped you guys, uh, and you know as usual, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Um, I'm loving the support I'm getting from you guys. Uh, after this, I'm going to go through and respond to some of the comments that I have on my last videos. Uh, we got simple instructions coming up on how to mine, how to how to uh, how to tweak your mining rigs and your GPUs to get the most out of them while using the least power. Ghost mode episode one is going to come up. Sorry to all of those Windows users. It is going to be a Mac episode uh, for episode one. Um, and guys, yeah, look, keep hitting that like, keep hitting the subscribe, keep hitting me, keep giving me that constructive criticism because um, I want to hear from you guys on what you want to hear from the channel, what you want to see from the channel. I'd like to apologize for the fact that I'm such a shit video editor and often my videos are a bit sort of disjointed and the editing is a bit crappy. Um, but, you know, I'm doing my best to bring you guys good content as much as I can. I've loved the support. Um, there's a Facebook group down in the links for those of you who like Facebook. For those of you who hate Mark Zuckerberg as much as I do, there's a Discord server down in the link that you can join. It's just a chat room where you can be completely anonymous. Just make up any username you want. Come and join in there. There are different channels for just general chat, trading tips, um, and whatever you want to you wanna talk about. Whether you have direct questions that you want to ask me, the Discord server is probably the place where you can reach me the quickest. Um, and again, I've just been loving the support, so thank you guys. I love you all. Um, Let's all be civil in the comments. I appreciate when man respects his fellow man or woman and we treat each other with the respect that we each deserve as fellow human beings. So peace and love. Love you all. Jimmy J, Cryptographic. I will see you all soon. Cheers. Peace out.